Science in Pajamas. Today is a special edition because it is April 22nd, 2020. So it is the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. Happy Earth Day, everyone! Woo! So today we're actually going to be taking a field trip to the mysterious backyard of Mrs. Komar. Dun, dun, dun. Let me just switch my shoes. I don't like to wear my inside shoes outside with good reason. But today we're going to talk a little bit about nature and all that goes along with it because like I said it is not just Earth Day, it's the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. So before we go outside, let's see, you notice you got a barrow there and it's a little hard to see there's a barrow there. And there is one inside that I'm currently working on painting. Those are called water barrels or rain barrels. What they do is they'll connect up with the um, the gutters and anytime it rains it'll fill them up. This way when we want to water our garden or anything like that we have easy access. So we can just use the water and recycle it. This way we're not using up um, other water where it could possibly have been treated. Yep, there's Ripley. Or anything like that. So I told you today we're going to be having a little bit of a special occasion. Now, I got some stuff. I got soil. I got some pots. And we just bought a hydrangea. Now, these are really beautiful flowers. Pretty fragrant, not overpowering. And what I'm going to do is it's not quite ready for us to put the hydrangea in the ground. It's still kind of cold outside and since it hasn't been in the soil previously it may not have time to establish its roots before the next freezer lower temperatures that can actually cause damage and possibly kill it. But its pot is a little bit small. So what I'm going to do is I'm just simply going to repot it for now. And then once the weather warms up a little bit, then we'll be able to plant it outside. I'm not one to necessarily mind getting my hands dirty a whole lot. I still have my gloves because, I mean, I don't like the dirt being all up under my nose. It just takes forever to clean. Hi. So I'm going to put that there for now. Don't worry, I won't leave it there. Now these smaller ones, they're actually for later because later on tonight we're going to be working on maybe starting some tomato plants to put in our garden. Hi, Ruby. Hi. Hi. You a good boy? He's a good boy. Sorry. I know it's a little bit windy, but it's such a nice day. I couldn't resist having a um, meeting out here or a video out here. So bear with me. This larger pot, this is going to be for the hydrangeas. I'm going to put my glovey gloveys on. Not exactly the most delicate person so typically what I would do is I'm just gonna start pouring some of it in. enough that the bottom is all nicely covered and then some I'm gonna put this off to the side see got some soil all right I'm gonna take the hydrangea and I'm gonna be super duper careful because I don't want to damage eggs when I'm taking it and transplanting it into the new pot. This pot, not very big for such a good sized plant. But again, I mean, with the wind and everything, it's been so chilly. I just, I don't want to put it in the ground and then cause it to die. Not till the roots are established. Now, once the roots are established, it'll be fine over winter. These are pretty hardy plants. They actually don't need a whole lot of care. But the thing is getting it established first. Get the little tag out. All right. So, 
notice I'm kind of squeezing at the container, I'm trying to loosen up the soil and the root ball that's in there. Put some of the remaining soil that was stuck at the bottom in there. And now we got our hydrangea. Now, I do want it to be nice and supportive, so I am going to add some more soil to it. Now this time, unfortunately, I can't really go ahead and just pour it in. The plant's kind of in the way. So this is a point where I'm also going to come back to my little trowel. And just try and get as much in there as I can. Yeah, yeah there we go. And sometimes when I get fed up with the trowel, I just use my hands and start stuffing it in there. You start hearing a little tiny, small snapping noise. Ripley is behind the table, actually behind the camera, and chewing on a stick. Don't mind them. And also here are the birdie friends. I believe that one, but is a that one is a cardinal. We do have a male and female cardinal that frequent our backyard. After I'm already. <laughs> oh, fun sec. Sorry, when I look at the screen, it's mirrored what it actually is. So everything is reversed. I think I got it. Alright. Then I can take you on a tour, once I'm done with this, of the rest of our backyard, show you some of the things that we do to help the earth, besides our rain barrels. I know, again, the rain barrels were inside, as for a few reasons. One, so I can paint them, make them look all pretty. And also, too, you don't want to leave them out over winter because, you know, the cold, the freezing temperatures, any moisture that gets stuck in it can freeze and the water is less dense than ice. It's actually going to expand and can damage the nozzles and the valves and everything. So you do want to disassemble rain barrels before you put, before winter and put them somewhere where they can stay out of the weather. Rain, whatever. They don't necessarily have to be inside your house. We actually keep ours in a shed. And then when the weather got nice, I brought them out, brought them inside so I can clean them up and paint them. That's one thing that we're doing to try and help out Mommy Earth. Planting a lot of different perennials is something else we're going to do. We have some milkweed seeds to help the monarch butterflies getting going and hopefully germinating soon. But we're really trying to focus on a lot of perennials like hydrangeas. They'll come back year after year if we take care of them. Um, I also have a clematis in there which is known as the queen of the vines. Once it gets all nice and established that should produce some very nice flowers year after year so we don't have to keep buying and replanting everything which is something I like. They take care of themselves. Not only that but these flowers they're, they're not just pretty to look at they're not just you know good smelling and fragrant. The thing about them is they're also great for pollinators in one moment. So they're also amazing for pollinators, meaning that they help out and provide food for bees, hummingbirds, small birds, um, all different sorts of uh, butterflies. So it helps them. And then by helping them, that also helps us. We need pollinators because pollinators give us new plants. We need plants. One, they're the basis of every single ecosystem because, well, they provide food. They are the producers. And two, because, well, 
They also provide oxygen for our planet. Ripley likes to go play. All right, so I'll show you our feeders. I'll also show you Ripley. Hey Ripley, say hi. Say hi. You ready? Butcha. All right, so let me introduce you to some of the things we have going around our garden or our backyard. So we do have this feeder. The nice thing about this one is it's squirrel proof. Closes off when they put pressure on. There's two sides to it. We also have a suet. So it's different kinds of seeds and nuts and all that that the birds can enjoy. The squirrels can actually enjoy this one too. I need to refill this. This is a bit of water for the birdies. It's a little mini water container. And then this provides nesting materials. So right now a lot of birds are finding mates and getting ready to lay eggs and build nests. So we provide some materials that we're not using. I mean it's a mixture of fluffy fluff and stuffing from Ripley's toys that he's destroyed as well as some of his fur. They make good nesting materials for different kinds of birds. All right and over here we have some more feeders. Well, this one is strictly for the birds. You can see we have a squirrel baffle so squirrels can't get up here. This one's getting pretty empty already. I just filled that up like not even two days ago. We also have some suets here for the birds. We can put two different kinds on. We actually do have different varieties of suets inside. We just wanted to get or use these ones up first because they are the older ones. <clears throat> All right. Now, it might seem like I'm a little harsh on the squirrelies. I'm not. I love squirrels. I think they're darn cute. So we actually do have a separate squirrel feeder right here. Yeah, there we go. Right there. I do need to put some more food in there for them. So sometimes I'll put leftover suets. This is a corn composite. So essentially what they do is they take corn from like 10, 12 cobs and then they grind it up and make almost like a cornmeal cake out of it. And then they put it in that shape. Someone's not getting enough attention. You're not getting enough attention. All right. Now this right here. He hasn't bloomed yet. We only put him in last fall. But it's going to be a good plant for um, hummingbirds. We also have a hummingbird feeder right there. That one's right on the window. So we do try and provide lots of sources of food and water for the plants and the animals. The rain barrels help with the plants. We have different plant or different other things that we're growing. It's a little too cold to take this netting off quite yet. Yeah, there we go. But if you look through it, you can see a plant. That's a goji berry plant. I'm trying to grow that because one, it attracts pollinators, and two, there's a lot of different recipes you can use goji berries for. We have some little plants growing there. This may look like a bird bath. It's actually a bee bath. So what it is put a little bit of water in there. The bees, when they're tired, can rest on the stones or the marbles and be able to get a drink and get nice and refreshed. And this is Ripley. Mm -hmm. Yes, hi. Say hi, Ripley. Say hi. Hi. All right. Let's see. Then here we have a butterfly house. So it's designed that only really butterflies, no birds can get in there. So if the butterflies are tired, a lot of them migrate. They can rest in there. We put some fruit like um, pieces of banana in there. The smell will attract them. We have another one of these. Again, it's hard to see inside there. It's too cold to take these off because we still have frost warnings. We had a frost warning and a freeze warning last night. But that's a boysenberry bush. Boysenberries are a hybrid of blackberries and raspberries. Very delicious. Very, very, very yummy and delicious. All right. 
So that's our backyard and all the things we're doing to try and make it friendly for the wildlife. Like I said, having pollinators and all that, it is super important. They do help us out. They help the entire planet out. And we're trying to take care of them as much as possible. Plus, nature's pretty cool. So why not try and take care of it? Ah. We also like to try growing different types of veggies also and fruits and whatnot. This year we're a little bit behind on our just everything. Alright, we're at least taking a poop. So we're a little bit behind on all of our growing. This coronavirus has kind of thrown us off in our schedule and getting things ready. But we'll probably put a few tomatoes and cucumbers going soon. Um, tonight we're going to start some tomatoes from seed. I know it's a little late to be doing that. But we're going to try it anyways. The cucumbers are actually really easy to grow from seeds. And you can grow them right out, put them right in the ground. So we're not too worried about that. We'll probably plant those next month. Usually in May is a good time to start your cucumbers. But tomatoes are harder to start from seed. And it's better if you get them started inside and then transplant them once they're pretty nice and stable. Right, Ripples? Something else we also like to do is we'll compost. Now, we don't have an actual composter, but we do have a compost pile. And we save that primarily for um, like yard clippings, leaves, um, plant products, and things like that. Not food products, though. First of all, you never put meat in a compost pile. It actually does not help. It makes it very bad for plant for the plants you're going to use the compost on. Hi, yes, hi. Um, definitely no waste products. No poop, dog or human. Don't put any of that in there. And um, a lot of our veggie waste, like the ends of carrots or cucumbers, you know, the parts that you don't eat, um, or rotten lettuce, things like that. We, yeah, well, if it's rotten, it gets tossed away. Some of them we can put out in the compost pile, but Ripley will try and eat some other things. Yeah, I know. Um, so that's why we usually leave that for more like yard waste or ashes from the fireplace or fire pit. Um, but in terms of like veggie scraps and all that, what we'll end up doing with those is we'll put them in the freezer for a while until we have a good sized bag of them. And then you can use that to make veggie stock. So vegetable stock, great for... Hey, stop eating that, sillies. Stop eating that. So veggie stock is great for, you know, soup bases, or if you're going to do like rice um, dishes and you need to soak the rice in a, a type of broth first, veggie stock is great for that. So yeah, um, let's see what else. So I just showed you our backyard. We do have more pollinator plants, um, different kinds of flowering plants like dahlias and Let's see, purple echinacea, black eyed Susans, which are Maryland state flower, some creeping flocks. We have that in our front lawn or our front yard. We have a little garden up there. And we also have another hummingbird feeder up there. Um, we haven't seen any hummingbirds this season, but they should be working on their migration and should hopefully be here soon. In terms of the bird feeder, we've seen quite a few different kinds. We've seen Carolina wrens, robins, um, different types of chickadees and different types of sparrows, American goldfinches, uh, let's see, what are those? house finches, cardinals, right? different kinds of squirrels. Right, Ripples? Yeah, you like to chase the squirrels. Yes, you do. All right. But yeah, I mean, you got to do what you got to do. You got to do what you can. I mean, not just with COVID-19, we're all in this together. Yeah, we are. Because, well, we're living things and we can easily pass on COVID or Corona from one person to the next. So we do have to be... Go, on, go bark. 
we do have to be responsible but not just that we're also on this planet together we have to be responsible with this planet if we destroy it if we get rid of all safe drinking water and all breathable air how is that going to help us i mean i like development and modern luxuries as much as the next person but they're not exactly any useful if you're dead so yes i'm not asking anyone to do any drastic changes i'm not but little things enjoy yourself outside go for walks don't you know use electricity if you don't have to meaning don't leave water running don't leave lights on if you're not using them start out small plant some pollinator attractors get some flowers going I mean, all those things are great ways to just you know, start small. I'm not asking anyone to go out and save the world by themselves, but do what you can with what you can. Ripley! Do what you can with what you can. Start small, every little bit helps. A lot of times people keep saying, oh, it's such a big job, what good can I do? Well, yeah, if everyone says that and no one's trying, then yeah, we're all doomed. But, now hear me out, if we all do just a little bit, and everyone does just a little bit, all those little bits add up. And then before you know it, we're all making big change together. We're all small cogs in the machine, small puzzle pieces of the puzzle. When we come together and we do good work together, we can all enact a lot of change. So, happy 50th anniversary Earth Day and here's to everyone hopefully you're finding ways to help out the earth in your your own capacity whatever it is I guess every little bit does count so until next time happy Earth Day and just stay awesome you guys stay safe keep enjoying nature and be as awesome as I know you are because you guys are all right take care Bye-bye.